get them to... The 22 dropout occurs when the ball is forced over the goal line by the opposition, having been kicked there by their opponents. Josh Cronfeld and another... The scrum occurs when a player mishandles and knocks the ball forward, passes forward or commits a minor infringement that doesn't affect the play of opponents in a major way. Well, pretty steady scrum. Stephen Larkham stretches the Lineouts occur when the ball has been put over the sideline by a team, the throw-in being given to the opposing team. Not expected to be a winner. And Eric Miller put in one big hit there. Have got to be aggressive close to that game line. Malcolm O'Kelly getting a hoosh from Miller. Over the ball and a good Penalties inside. frequently occur around tackles in which the scramble for the ball results in players infringing the game's here, laws. The on, Amongst these are the comes in the side players not staying on their side of the ball, ball. players on the ground interfering with play. With their arms now. Does it work? No problem. Players getting offside. This occurs when they get too close to the opposition before the ball is out of scrums, lineouts, brucks and mauls. It can also occur when a player joins in play from in front of the last player in his team to play the ball. When the ball is kicked down the field and caught by a player inside the 22 metre line and that player calls mark, the player is able to kick down the field of play or even tap it and run. He actually called for the mark. If you notice again, Morgan Williams from the line out, he catches the ball. In general, the game is one in which the ball is won by the forwards, then given to the backs, who use it to run into open space and attempt to score a try. If they are unsuccessful in immediately scoring, they can mount an attack by forming a series of rucks or mauls. If supporting players are quick enough at the tackle and the team remains organised, the opportunity for scoring a try will be great. In a single defensive line right across the pitch, here it is. Good, hasn't got it, but in fact Murphy has gone, he's got 10, 12 metres inside the 22. As play develops, forwards and backs become mixed, and as a result, forwards may run with the ball like backs do, while backs may join in rucks to make sure their team keeps the ball. The forwards are numbered 1 to 8, and the backs 9 to 15. Here, we see examples of this interchange of positions. Somerville. Il y a du surnombre. Oui, il y a Mathieu Doupe, mais il y a, oui, il y a des cannes. Et c'est des boulevards devant lui qui va marquer. Et oui, et oui, oui, oui. La contre Tous it will be. Dawson, O'Gara, the line supporters going absolutely mad. Morris just needs to keep his cool. O'Gara on to Marshall. Out it goes to Healy. The step, the score. By position, players may be specialised at some aspects of play. One of these aspects the forwards are involved in are the scrums, in which eight players bind together as one unit and attempt to push their opponents off the ball in order to win it. Players in the front row are the props with the hooker between them, who hooks the ball back using the foot. They are numbered one, two and three. Behind them are the two locks who push directly on the front row and around them the loose forwards, numbers 6, 7 and 8. When the ball goes out of play, a line-out is formed. Once again, the forwards contest the ball. Here, it is not pushing skills, but jumping and catching skills that result in the ball being won, and then passed to the backs for an attack. Those who are usually given responsibility for jumping and catching the ball are the locks, numbers 4 and 5, and maybe one of the loose forwards. The back unit are made up of inside backs, the half back or scrum half, who clears the ball from the source of possession, and the first receiver who is given various names, the most common of which are out half, fly half, or first 5-8, numbers 9 and 10. Tries the Bosch, it doesn't work. Lock him once more, he's... 
The midfield backs, numbers 12 and 13, whose role it is to create space for the other backs to penetrate and score. The midfield backs may carry the ball forward and set up a ruck or more. Alternatively, they may use their running or passing skills to pass to a player in a better position than themselves. To Erasmus, delayed the pass for Fleck. Happy to have a go at any old time. Esther Hazen, he slips it. Tennis Delport. Mertens is after him, but he won't get him. That's another one. Five. When the pass is made, all players back up the ball carrier. The players, once players underway, have the opportunity of performing all the skills of the game. There is no restriction because of their position as to what they can do once play gets underway. The fullback, number 15, and the two wings, numbers 11 and 14, have the important attacking roles in finishing off opportunities created by those inside them, and also in fielding kicks that are made to the extremities of the field. Down as far as Andrew Mertens, and Mertens with the kick down as far as Brayton Pulsar. In attack, the players should go forward, run straight and pass to a player in a better position than themselves to continue playing. Here they go again. Only Latham to beat. Regan's across. He easily beat Latham. And another try coming up here for New Zealand. Alatini. And in Australia being stretched. It's a lovely ball from Tyndall to Perry. And there's Greening stepping inside, looking for support. Good stuff from England. To Healy, missing out Greenwood and Perry to Mark Taylor. Hand off from Taylor and out to Perry to score. If running and passing opportunities do not exist, the ball may be moved forward by kicking it in the air. A high kick enables members of the kicker's team to run forward and attempt to catch the ball to continue play. As there is only one ball in the game and 30 players, when a team is in attack, one player has the ball and the remaining 14 players in the attacking team support the ball carrier, giving opportunities for attack. Matty Stewart takes it a bit further. They're over the Italian 10 metres line. Have a chance as Hodge feeds out to Townsend. Lovely run there by Patterson. In defence, the defending players should run towards the ball carrier in a pattern to make a strong tackle, preventing the attacking team from going forward. And so they pick Peter Rousseau. That's the halfway line. No score. Voss to Montgomery. Skip one move to Esther Hazen. Didn't quite work that. Back comes Esther Hazen again. Hayes couldn't quite hold on to him. Good tackle by Spring Stringer, though. And once again, it's Fenter to rescue and tidy everything up. This will result in the attacking players getting frustrated and kicking possession away to the defending players, who can then regain possession and use it to either kick forward or to attack with the ball in hand themselves. The game is an integrated one in which players in all positions work together to create an opportunity for the one player who is able to cross the try line and score. In defence, it is one in which players work together to regain possession they have previously lost and turn that defence into attack, from which a score can occur. Another one here today, but this was a team try. This was everybody involved. That was just a finish. Well, and it's the start of it, in fact, with Umanga breaking the advantage line. And then it was moved on. Ruben Thorne actually broke it too. Then it's pick and go all, all day long. Justin Marshall to start with. Picked up, I think it was Flavel who did that one. And then again by Cribb setting up the last one. Then it was moved. Watch Tony Brown. Watch Tony Brown. Superb in the tackle. Offloaded. Jeff Wilson just sitting in the right place. So often he is. What a try.